my question for you is how are you incorporating these developments into your decision to stay and separately what concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she's not qualified to be President. Let's start there. I commend all the nations that stepped up when I counted to stand with Ukraine. I've said before, Russia will not prevail in this war. Ukraine will prevail in this war. And we'll stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. Thank you. If you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. <laughs> if you uh, want to really see. So these are going to be the emblematic. Uh images really of this presidential election here you've got joe biden sleepy joe most of this week was actually about him whether or not he's going to stand down whether he's got dementia whether he's capable to go on and he has come in and he has said that it will take the god almighty for him to stand down and not become a presidential candidate in this election, which will be going on bonfire night or Guy Fawkes night, the 5th of November in America. Okay, that is the emblematic image we're going to have of Joe Biden. This is what he's going to be remembered for. This is the emblematic image which not only America but the world will see of Donald Trump and the possibly high probability the next president of the united states so uh very very clear when people are under pressure when we are under pressure we tend to revert to our inner core character our inner core values and what you see here in this image is trump with his inner core values and in the you know, inner core character now at that point in time when that picture is taken he's gone up and he said obviously the gentleman is, is really high and he's saying fight 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 that is to say he doesn't know if he's going to come out of this if he isn't he's asking his audience to carry on the torch he's thinking of america first more than himself okay that image of being protected by the the the, you know, the, 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 the the undercover secret service or whatever and the american flag over the blue sky is the complete and utter opposite image of when the crowds were trying to storm the uh the, the senate okay that's it's, it's between le left and right in terms of that distance between the two now i think that the american public are fed up being gaslit with regards to donald trump there are a lot of people who are scared about trump becoming president not just in america but overseas and the most obvious one really is the ukraine that corrupt fascist government which has been propped up by america and britain and european tax payers money in the defense what we're sending over there and the funding we're sending over into that region in a hopeless war which we know the outcome of people want to see this chap donald trump down because he will end that war 
Twickenham, Jack Flash. You see, I was never a fan of Donald Trump uh, previous to him getting in uh, when he was going against Hillary. And I was a bystander during his presidency. I was non-committal. It was amusing to watch. However, the one takeaway I got from the Trump presidency, what's really impressed me, was his foreign policy. How he was willing openly to shake hands with very despicable people like Kim Sung, whatever his name is, from North Korea. Okay. There were no wars during his presidency. And I can only attribute that to him being a draft dodger is actually quite positive because he didn't get America engaged in very expensive wars. Okay. It was the winding down of the Afghanistan situation. This is the image which has won Trump the next presidential election. And it's going to be interesting to see how the woke media, the left, spin this and spin it well. Already they're trying to say that this was staged, but this is not this is not something staged. And literally by the grace of God, by the looks of things, Donald Trump managed to come out of that relatively unscathed. It could have been a completely different outcome had the assassin sniper gone for the body shot, which is anyone who's trained in military knows they always go to the center of the mass to take a headshot. You have to be pretty good and pretty confident. And you can see where he was panicking after the first initial shot where he started firing and a series of other shots hit and hope. He, he missed the target. It was all, it was already, it was gone. His opportunity was gone. He went for a headshot. No need. It's just as well he didn't. Trump is alive. Nothing's going to stop him. Not even if he gets killed. Nothing's going to stop him. Yeah, he has created momentum. Now, us in the UK, we need to take note of this. There's certain lessons. First of all, it's going to be interested, interesting how the mainstream media spin this especially those that left wokeness, because we're always being told and always gaslit that the real danger comes from the far right. We're always told this, and we're always gaslit this idea. Well, you know, people are putting Trump on the far right, and it's, that's just not working. People have been a threat to democracy, they've been on the left. And when we transpose that into the UK, we think about Nigel Farage and his hip, airplane crash and people throwing strings into him which could have been anything in, in its substance and it's happened twice it's also happened to uh, uh what's the name tommy robertson for example okay the lawfare which they've tried to uh, prohibit uh, tommy robertson you know these things can get out of hand our threat is from possibly the far left you know if, if it can be but i'll just 